Joining us on ICANN Media right now, uh, Wendy Wilson and Derek Hubbard with Weatherford. The two of you were here talking about how you developed a safety culture at your company. Why was this step something that, that you thought should be taken? Well, we have done a complete reinvigoration of our safety program over the last three years, and we knew that we needed a targeted approach to actually be able to change culture, and we knew that we needed help doing it in that management of change, so we wanted to enlist champions on the ground, on the front lines that could help us do that. Derek, I'm, th I'm thinking the company probably thought it had a safety culture to begin with, but it, up until about three years ago when you decided to make a change. Sure, yeah, I mean, we did. Uh, one, one thing we didn't focus on very well as a growth company was integration. That led to a, a number of problems throughout the entire organization, not just not just HSE. And it came to the point where we realized that we really needed to do something different. And our numbers had plateaued and, and we realized that the culture we had in place wasn't what we wanted. So we engaged our, our senior management to get on board and, and to take this journey with us together. So was that the first step then, is, is to get senior management on board so that you could proceed with this? Absolutely. I mean, if they own it, it's going to work. Mm -hmm. It's going to be their plan, their idea. So we engage them at the very top level in the global groups, and we also engage them at the regional level. So our, our senior leadership at the Canadian level, we pulled into the fold, and they were actually engaged in even inviting the individuals to come attend the workshop. Right, because you were also looking for other leaders as well, and those were people basically frontline workers. Absolutely, and when we say leaders, they weren't necessarily official leaders. Many of them were unofficial leaders, people that were influencers, and in many cases, we chose people that weren't switched on to safety yet because we knew if we could change their perception of safety that they would help us sell the program. Well, that's what I found interesting in your talk is that you looked for leaders, um, and, and many of the ones that you found weren't as safety conscious as you may have liked. Was that a, a hindrance at all or did you think that they still had what you, was needed? Actually, it was something that uh, we didn't specify was, was important or not. What we looked for was for people that had the ability to influence others. In many cases, that there was people that were converted, so to speak, to this, the safety culture. Um, in many cases, it wasn't. It, it was those people that that, uh, that others want to follow. They want to eat lunch beside. They want to have a joke with in the lunchroom. These kind of guys. They have the ability to, to really capture people's attention and to get others to follow them. Whether they were safety advocates at the beginning or not, was it was really not important to us. What were some of the steps that you took to convince them that safety is important to the company and should be to them as well? Sure. I mean, it, it started with, with the invitation to the program from, from the regional vice president. And it, it literally was, um, you've been identified as an influencer and we want your help to help change things at Weatherford. And then in the program, we, we took a little different tact and we got them to understand what it was like to be involved in an incident and the effect that had on their families. And then we, after that, we, we gave them the tools to be successful and to go back to their facilities and start the process there. I guess, Wendy, just going back to that, getting them involved in, and, and showing them what it was like with an incident happening to them. Tell us some of the ramifications of that that you pointed out in, in your program. Oh, it was absolutely amazing as they started to think about the milestones, the firsts that were going to be happening without that parent involved in the picture for their children, for example. Um, the milestones throughout their lives that would impact them. And, and we had so many employees come to us afterwards to say, you know what, I've never ever thought about it in this aspect before, how my actions as an individual can impact not only my, my family, but my coworkers' families as well. And that struck a chord, obviously. Absolutely. They, they from that moment, were all of a sudden very interested in everything and every tool that we wanted to show them for the rest of the course. So they have the tools now. What did you expect of them? We had each of the groups from each of the facilities and, and locations actually create an action plan before they left the course. So they had tangible deliverables that they wanted to go back to help spread the message when they got there. We've, from a senior leadership team, actually went with them back to their facilities to help engage their local leadership, and these are the official leaders, the managers, and so on, and made it clear that we're supporting this plan that they have in place, and we meet with them regularly to ensure that we understand what's working, what's not, and how we can actually break down those barriers that are standing in their way of changing the culture. Have you had to cultivate new leaders since you started this process then? Have somebody take over from someone who may have left or anything along those lines? Yeah, it's an interesting question. We, uh, we did a, a review recently, and one of the things we never planned for with this program was attrition, natural attrition. And so that was one of the lessons learned is, is how do we build, when we, when we make this program more broadly available throughout the organization, how do we build things like that and so we can tie it to more, more retention, how we can get people moving through the organization so that they stay and not, not depart. So that was, was something that was actually not planned for, but it, it's something that in the reality of our business, it happens. So three years after you started this process, what's happened then? Um, we've seen 
probably precedent setting uh, number declines as far as our lagging indicators. Uh, with a company uh, as big as we are with the breadth that we have, uh, the declines that we've seen from our lagging indicators have been tremendous. Uh, there's, there's still a ways to go, obviously, but we're, we're definitely moving in the right direction. So a lot of the things we, we've done have, have been working in tandem and it's starting to see good results. Do you have a next step planned already? Well, I think it's to push the program <coughs> further. We've been looking at how do we make it completely sustainable? How do we engage more employees? And we're now looking at how we can engage local line leadership um, to put the same message into them because we believe that they are such leaders on locations. And in addition to that, we've actually asked, started asking the employees that were part of the initial workshop, who do they think needs to go to the course next? Who do they think needs to be converted per se? Wendy and Derek, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. We've been chatting with Wendy and Derek from Weatherford here on ICANN Media.